but it's for your benefit if it will help you fall along with the sermon today. And so we are actually going to take a look at the story of Mary. She was, of course, included in the lesson that I just read, but there's a little more detail fleshed out for us in the Gospel of John about Mary's response. And when I'm talking about Mary, I'm talking about Mary the Magdalene. Now, a little bit before we get into the story of Mary, because it is Easter, and Easter is a traditional time where Christians would get together. You may not be aware of this, but they would get together every Easter Monday in the ancient times, in particular the medieval days, and they would have a great feast and festival where they would tell jokes at the expense of the devil, and they would laugh. And I think that is an awesome thing, because God had a laugh laugh. So I'm going to tell you an Easter joke today about a woman. She happened to be blondish, a neighbor, maybe it's a guy, we see this guy pastor, how's that? So I'm not criticizing any of you females out there blonde here. It's a male pastor by the name of, I don't know, Dave, okay? And so he died, he went to heaven. And standing before the gates, of course, he thought he knew everything. And so everybody's getting a test in order to get to heaven, which, by the way, a test isn't true, because you know the only test we have to get to heaven is what? We trust in Jesus Christ. Okay? So let's make sure that you don't get from my joke today that you have to do something to get to heaven. It's already been done in Jesus Christ. But these are the jokes that we tell. So here I am. He is, Dave, whatever, this blog guy, standing in front of heaven, and he was told that he needs a passive quiz. And so Peter's pretty hard on him. He starts pulling out all these things about uh, systematic theology and all these other types of things. And of course, his head's spinning because he's not the brightest guy in the place. And so all of a sudden, uh, he says, well, look, I'll make it real easy for you. Can you tell me what happened on Easter Sunday? And so Dave looks up and says, everybody knows what happens on Easter Sunday. Oh, well, that's good. You tell me what happened on Easter Sunday, I'll let you in. He said, well, it's that day where we celebrate where that stone was rolled away from a grave. And Peter's like, yes, finally, he's got it. And, and the groundhog came out, so I shouted and went back in and did the sequel. You know what? I choke under pressure. I'm just saying. I'm not good at tests. It is kind of a bad answer, a bad joke, I get it. But it's also true that just as we can sometimes be ignorant about what it really requires to get to heaven, there is a test. And the test is simply this trust in Jesus. Okay? But we also are very ignorant about some of the characters of the Bible. The one who's been much maligned is this woman, Mary Magdalene. I'm going to tell you what the Bible says about her because she represents us today in our response to the good news of Jesus Christ and his resurrection. The very first thing we know about Mary according to the Bible is that she was possessed by seven demons and Jesus touched her and healed her. But let me clarify something else of which many of us may be ignorant. Of course, not us because you've heard me say this before, right? She was not... A prostitute. No. Really? You say it's not true. You've grown up, you've grown up believing that and hearing that. You want to know why you grew up hearing that? Because some priests back in the medieval days didn't like the fact that women had this woman named Mary Magdalene. They were honoring her and they were disciples and followers of Mary Magdalene who were proclaiming Jesus Christ. They didn't like the fact that women had authority. So they wanted to malign Mary as much as they possibly could. So they conflated the story about the woman who was a prostitute wiping Jesus' feet with her tears and her hair and said, oh, well, that was Mary Magdalene. The Bible doesn't say that. It's kind of crazy how we do that. So again, in the story, a lie that was told by Mary priests in medieval days because they didn't like the fact that Mary Magdalene was more respected than some man. Goodness sakes. The priest wanted to diminish Mary's contribution to the church and suppress the role of women. So what else do we know about Mary? We know she was also a companion of Jesus. She was one of only three people present in the crucifixion of the Bible mentions in every single gospel story. We hear about Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as Mary. And then uh, Mary Magdalene. And she's also the very first person that's witnessed the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The very first person to see Jesus after his resurrection. And she therefore was chosen by Jesus to be the apostle to the apostle. I want you to get your head around that for a minute. For those of you who seem to think that women are less than men. Okay? 
The apostle to the apostle was a woman by the name of Mary Magdalene who's been so maligned by the church because we don't like the fact that women have authority and have been given it by God. Okay. You with me so far? I see a lot of men, women smiling. We see a lot of men with their heads down. Boy, you're going to have some slaying to do when you get home, men. Because God sees people for who they are. Mary, who's been so dismissed, overlooked, ignored, probably was in her life. Jesus took a look at her and saw her for what she was. She was Mary the Magdalene. Now, some people explain that it's just a city when she was born. You may not be aware of There's no city called Magdalene. Do you know what the word Magdalene means? It means fortress. Fortress. Mary the fortress. Who else do we have with that name like that? Peter the rock. Did you know the early church so esteemed Mary that she was given the nickname? You had Peter the rock, Mary the fortress. These were the foundations upon which Jesus Christ built his church. Mary the fortress and Peter the rock. Jesus saw her for what she was and what she could and would be. Mary the rock, or Peter, Mary the fortress, Peter the rock, the foundation of the church. The one, and these two people, not surprisingly, were the ones who received the greatest mercy from God and understood the merciful God was to them and became the eight greatest agents of the church of Jesus Christ of mercy. So what do I want to tell you this Easter? Obviously, Christ is risen. We're so excited. We celebrate Easter every single day of our lives. Because every single day we live in the good news that Jesus Christ came and loved you. Am I right? Okay. But not only that, God has chosen you and overwhelmed you with the blessings of this life. Now, I know it is easy because I hear people do this all the time. It's so easy to go home and complain about everything that went wrong today. I got a parking ticket. I stubbed my toe. My hairstyles, how my hair on? Well, they didn't to touch my hair in a couple of years here. So my hairstyles hasn't messed up. But some of yours might have you came home with I can't believe I gotta live with this hair for the next several months, right? All of these things, annoyances, what do we call those first world problems, right? Your people starve to death today. But God has blessed you with food to eat, plenty on your table, family that loves you. It's so easy to fist, uh, focus on the things that go wrong. We need to break out this poverty mentality as though we're so impoverished. Every single day, life has been granted to you, and it is a gift of God. You are owed nothing. So you live today. Guess what? You've been blessed. Your heart beats. Your breathing in and out. You've, those are that's about what, 30 to 40,000 times a day. Your heart beats. You breathe in and out. You just receive 40,000 blessings. Merry Christmas to you. God bless you. Happy Easter. God has blessed you richly. You have food on your table. God has blessed you. Every day, every breath, every heartbeat, every meal, every opportunity of life is a gift of God that you are not owed, but God gave to you because he absolutely thinks you are special and adores you. Isn't that amazing? Only when you have that spirit of gratitude, or only when you start seeing the many blessings of God, Will you be an effective agent of God's mercy? That is why Mary Magdalene was chosen by God, because she understood how blessed she was. Second thing we learned from her lesson is on the next page. Jesus sees us just like he did for Mary. Jesus sees us for who we are. I'm going to tell you who you are. You are the handiwork of God. God has breathed his life in your lungs, and therefore you are a holy masterpiece. Are you hearing me with this? Other people might, might not see you as a holy masterpiece. They might see you as a holy wreck and a holy mess. But Jesus sees you for what you truly are. They're ignorant, okay? I'm going to tell you a story about my ignorance about art. My daughter was doing a, uh, back when she was in high school, a, a uh, piece on uh, a, 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 what am I thinking of? A paper, okay? We'll get it. That's a hard word to come up with. She was doing a paper <coughs> on Picasso. And so we were looking at some of the pictures of Picasso, and I'll be frank with you, I wasn't very inspired. It was just like, so what? You see these kind of impressionist artwork and no big deal and this and 
that. We had the opportunity about that time, we went to the Guggenheim Museum in New York City. You get the opportunity, please go to the Guggenheim. It's just a, it's just a wonderful gem of a museum. Up at the top, this whole floor they have dedicated to artwork by Picasso. And I'm like, Picasso, okay. My daughter's kind of excited because she wrote this report on Picasso. We got up there, and there's our work. I, I'm no lie, one foot away from a, a Picasso. A piece that I had seen in the book and just dismissed as just, eh, so what, no big deal. But all of a sudden, I've seen all the brush strokes, all the details that you can't see in a picture that's in the book. And all of a sudden, I, I seriously, I promise cry. It was a masterpiece. And I said, oh, now I get it. See, this is what people do with your life. They see you a snapshot of your life. They see a picture, a photograph. They say, eh. But you look a little bit closer. You see all the brush strokes, all the detail that God's put in your life. You are an absolute masterpiece. That's what Jesus saw in Mary. That's what Jesus sees in you. And that is why God chose you. Don't ever let somebody dismiss you as just, eh, nothing much worth anything. You're a masterpiece of God. I think the third thing we learned about Mary and her, inter and her intersection with the resurrection and the resurrected Lord, and this is simply this, and this goes with the masterpiece. God's opinion of us is the only one that truly matters. Because people will lie about you and besmirch your character and say all sorts of things. Hey, they called Mary a prostitute. She wasn't. Because they wanted to diminish her. But all that really matters is God's opinion of Mary. What's God's opinion of Mary? She was the one chosen to be the apostle to the apostles. Jesus, number three. Number four, the third thing I think we learned about it. And this is from Jesus himself, what he did on the resurrection. Break the rules! Yes, you heard me right. You're hearing this in church. Break the rules. Are you well? Yes. You're saying, what are you talking about? Didn't Jesus just break the rules by resurrecting from the dead? I think that was kind of a big breaking of the rules. That's a no-no. But not only that, Jesus broke the rules by choosing Mary to be the apostles of the apostles. To be the messenger of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That was against the rules. The rules made up by men, by the way. Jesus refused to obey stupid rules whenever they prevented people from accomplishing great tasks. You guys remember the story, it was a few years back, um, about Captain Scully landing the plane on the Hudson River, right? After he hit all those birds and he was going down. If Captain Scully had obeyed all, those, obeyed all the rules that he was told he had to obey, every single one of those people would be dead. But Captain Scully was a very experienced pilot. He was a Vietnam veteran. He had 10,000 hours, 20,000 hours or more, I think it was, <coughs> on airplanes. This man knew how to fly. He was told, you have to do this, you have to do this. He's like, this is what we're doing. It's against the rules, but this is what we're doing. You're not supposed to land a plane on the Hudson River. I don't land, they're going to die. Where do you learn that? Do you know they don't teach that in flight school? Do you know they're not taught in flight school? Your pilots are not taught how to land a plane on the water. Scully knew because he was from an old school day when they learned these things. He knew how he had to put the position of the plane on the river and how to do that. He said it was coming together of a per perfect circumstance because if been a modern day pilot who had been trained in the airlines today, he would not have been able to land that plane the way he did. Because he was willing to break the rules for the safety of everybody on board. Sometimes it is the right thing to do to break the rules, like when you want to raise Jesus Christ from the dead, or choose a woman that everybody else dismissed as nothing to be the messenger of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Are you with me? Break the rules as often as needed to do the right thing in Jesus' name. And then number five, be an agent of mercy. But to be an agent of mercy, like Mary, we have to get up and go out because we've been so blessed by God. You have to understand how merciful and good God has been to you. Because there's an entire world out there that needs your blessing and the blessing of God. So I'm going to 
finish with a story. Some of you have heard the story. I do not apologize for telling it again because it's a darn good story. And for those who have not heard it, you need to hear this. It is a true story based on a woman in our church. Her name is Ruby Copper. I tell you the story because she told me to tell the story as often as I possibly could. She wanted her story told. And I'm telling Ruby's story today. She lived down in Grand View Avenue. Ruby Copper, by her own admission, was the biggest bigot and hater of black people you could possibly imagine. Of course, that is not the word that she would use. She was downright nasty in her attitude towards black people. She thought they should all die. She thought the earth should be rid of them. She thought they were an abomination. Ruby got sick. Ruby's family did the best job they could to take care of her, but they could not be there all the time. They were young, they were growing their family, their families were growing, and they had kids to take care of. They had all these things going on, they had to work, so they couldn't be there all the time. Ruby was at home, they were concerned about her. She needed to make sure somebody came in and checked her for breakfast, somebody came and got her medication mid-morning, mid somebody came and took care of her for lunch, somebody came midday to make sure she got the medication there, somebody came in for uh, dinner, they didn't have money to take care of us, they didn't know what they were do. Oh, but there was a woman named Marie. Guess what? You're probably guessing part of the story, but Marie was black. Marie was her next door neighbor. Marie saw all the fuss. Marie had been yelled at and called all sorts of names by Ruby. I mean all sorts of names. Are you ready for this? Marie's last name is Golden. <coughs> so not making this up. She, she lives up her name. So Marie saw this woman who had berated her, yelled at her because of the color of her skin. Marie saw that this woman was mean. Guess what Marie does? Marie goes over and says, Ruby, I'm going to help you. Ruby would rather die than be touched by a black woman. Okay? But Marie is very hard-headed, as well as being very kind, generous, and loving. Marie, every single day, in a relentless fashion, comes over, brings lunch. First time Marie brought lunch, Ruby just threw it in the garbage. Because she was afraid that was going to make her dirty. But Marie just kept coming over and over and over and over, and she broke Ruby's heart. Ruby all of a sudden looked up at Marie, and she no longer saw a black woman. She saw a child of God who was trying to love her, and Ruby said, I realize what a fool I have been. She broke down and she confessed to Marie. Her bigotry, her hatred, her racism, she says, I need my life transformed. Marie and Ruby became like this the rest of their lives. They were best of friends. On the before, the day before Ruby died, she said, I'm telling you something. I mean, I saw this transformation, this is amazing. Ruby came up to me and said, I'm gonna die. I want you to do two things for me. I want you to tell the story about how God changed my victories and racism because of the regal and her touch of mercy and generosity in my life. And the second thing I want you to promise me, on the day of my funeral, I want Marie sitting right there. I want her to sit with my family because this woman is my family. Is that an amazing story? This is what God can do through people of mercy. So the real point of the story is Marie. Marie, who was the abused and mistreated woman, became God's mercy to Ruby and transformed her life. I am encouraging you today, you can leave this place and be a messenger and an agent of God's mercy today. You don't think you have to be anything spectacular. You are exactly the way God created me. You're perfect the way you are. You just need to go out and be yourself. Trust that God has chosen you for a purpose and a reason, and trust that you're a masterpiece of God, and God will use you to change people's lives. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I am so grateful for the witness of Ruby. I really hope nobody thinks I've trapped Ruby because I am not. A woman who's willing to change her life 
when she sees evidence of the truth, is an amazing lady. But more so amazing is the gift of Marie, who is willing to be an agent of mercy in a place where she was unwelcome. There are other people who have been that way too. Mary Magdalene herself was unwelcome, treated unkindly, thought less of, but yet God, you chose a masterpiece because you saw her as a masterpiece. You chose her to be the apostle to the apostles. We just give you thanks again for the good news of Jesus Christ. And now we can put our hands up and say, God, choose me. Choose each person here that we might leave this place and be messengers of mercy this day. For he asks us in Jesus' name.